Hey boys and girls, this is uh, journal page 10, lesson 1.2, uh, addition of integers. So for number one, we have negative nine plus two. Different sign. So remember, same sign, we were adding and keeping the sign, but different sign, we subtract the number parts, nine minus two is seven, and we keep the sign of whichever number has a greater absolute value, which would be negative nine, so it stays negative. Number two, five plus a negative five. Well, two ways to do this. One, we could remember the property that says if we add opposites, we get zero. But if you forgot that, you would say, well, there are different signs, so we subtract five minus five is zero, and we keep the sign of whichever has a larger absolute value, but they're the same absolute value, so we don't have any sign. Zero is neither negative nor positive. Number three, negative 12 plus negative six. Same sign, so we add the number part. 12 plus six is 18. And we keep the sign. Because if you had 12 negatives and you add six more negatives, well, now you've got 18 negatives. Number four, negative 10 plus 19 plus five. Well, you could add from left to right, but remember since it's all addition, we can do this in any order we want. I would prefer to add my two positives. 19 plus five is 24. And now I can do this negative 10 plus 24, different sign. So I subtract, 24 minus 10 is 14, and I keep the sign of the number with the larger absolute value, which is the positive, so it stays positive. Number five, negative 11 plus negative 20 plus nine. Well, this time I've got two negatives here. I'm gonna add those up. Negative 11 plus negative 20 gives me negative 31, same sign, add and keep, plus nine. Now I have different signs, so I subtract 31 minus nine is 22. And I keep the sign of the negative because it's got the larger number part here, a larger absolute value. Number six, negative seven plus seven plus negative eight. Well, I noticed when I was writing this down, I had a negative seven plus a positive seven. I remember that when I'm adding opposites, I get zero. So this is zero plus negative eight. And any time we add zero to a number, it doesn't change the number, so this stays negative eight. Number seven. Well, number seven, uh, this says use mental math to solve the equation. So we had x plus negative five equals four. And where would I have to start in order to add negative five to something to get four? Well, it can't be a negative, because if I add two negatives, it just gets more negative. Um, so it's going to have to be a positive, if I, and I have to end with positive four. So it's going to have to be more positive than this is negative. And it's going to have to be more positive by four. So instead of five, I'd add four, that'd get nine. It's got to be nine positive. Let's try that out. Nine plus negative five. And different sign, so I'd subtract and get four, and I'd keep the sign of the larger. So my x has to be nine in order for that to work out. Number eight, y plus six equals negative two. Same kind of a problem here. I, I've got a positive here. If this were positive, I would just have a bigger positive, and I don't. So it's gonna have to be a negative, and it's gonna to have to be more negative than this is positive because in the end, this stays negative. And it's gotta be more negative by two. So negative eight, that has two more negatives than this has positives. So when I add that six, negative eight plus six, different sign. So I subtract and get two. 
keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is the negative. So my y had to be negative 8 for this to work out. Uh, barely enough room to do number 9, but I've got a lot of room over here. So I'm just going to do number 9 up here. Negative 10 equals negative 7 plus z. This problem sometimes bothers people because the um, variables on the right hand side, that's not a big deal. It's an equation, so it can be on either side. So we'll solve it just like it is. Um, here I've got an 10 negatives. Well, I started with 7 negatives and I have to add something to get to 10 negatives. This time it is actually more negative than here. So I'm just adding two negatives up to get a something that's more negative. And if I started with seven negatives, I'm going to have to add three more negatives to get up to 10 negatives or to get down to 10 negatives. So z equaled negative three. Number 10, I don't assign, but I'm going to go over it right now and we'll go over it in class. I don't really like it because uh, it's a little vague on a couple of the things, but this says the table shows the change in your hair length over a year. So we're going to say that our hair, um, let's say, starts totally bald January 1st. Okay, so maybe I lost a bet or something, totally shaved my head on January 1st. Well, by the end of January, it had grown two inches. Then by the end of February, it, I must have cut off an inch of hair. It grew three more inches by the end of August, cut off four more inches by the end of September, and then uh, grew three more inches by the end of December. So it says, what is the total change in your hair length at the end of the year? Well, we can just add all of these up. So that would be two plus negative one plus three plus negative four plus 3 again. Okay, so um, 2 plus negative 1, different sign subtract. Keep the sign of the larger, so that'd be add these two and you get 1 plus 3 plus negative 4 plus 3, just bringing the rest down. 1 plus 3 is 4 plus negative 4 plus 3. 4 plus a negative 4, those are opposites, so I get 0 plus 3 and 0 plus 3 is 3. So when I add all of these up, and you don't have to show all of this work, but I was just doing it one step at a time, 3 inches grand total at the end of the year. So that was part A. Part B. Is your hair longer in January or December? Explain your reasoning. Well, by the end of December, it had grown a grand total of three inches. By the end of January, it was only two inches. So, by the end of December. Okay, at the end of the year, we showed that it was three inches longer than we started. And right here, it says at the end of January, it was two inches longer than we started. So, obviously, three is longer than two. And C. When is your hair the longest? Explain your reasoning. Well, let's walk through this. If it was, if we were bald, or I was bald at the beginning of January, by the end of January, I had two inches of hair. By the end of February, I had lost an inch, so I'm back down to one inch of hair. So here we had two inches at the end of January. Oh, I just marked down this. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, by the end of February, I'm back down to one inch. By the end of August, I gained another three inches. So uh, I was at one and I gained three more. So now I'm at four inches. By the end of September, I cut off those four inches. I'm down to zero again. I must have liked bald or maybe I lost the same bet or something. And then I gained another three inches. So where was it the longest? Well, at the end of August, we were at plus four. So end of August. And then we can put, we were at plus four to explain our reasoning. Oh, I hope that helps. Ask questions in class if you didn't understand anything. And have a wonderful day.